Yeah, no, it definitely says on the back of the box, without flicker and without harm to human eyes. Okay, let's just hope they've only made one mistake on the box. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers. And this video is all about the first time you're in a studio trying to balance two different sources of light. In this case, I'm gonna balance my flash with these continuous LED light bulbs. Now the secret for this is really easy. All you're going to do is work out the exposure for your dimmest light source, which is actually the light bulbs first, and then you're gonna work out the exposure for your brightest light source. You've also got to think about color, and we'll get to that later in the video. For now, I've got this nice little area I need to set up, so whilst I'm doing that, you need to click on the subscribe button and the bell icon, so you never miss a video right here on Adorama TV. Right, let's get a light set, let's get a model in, let's get shooting. So to help me out today, I've got the amazing Charlotte. Charlotte's gonna be the model for this session, and you'll notice we've got these rather nice LED light bulbs hanging here, but no flash, we'll get to that in a minute, because the first thing we need to do is work out the exposure. Now, usually when I'm using flash, I have a standard set of exposures, which is f8 as my aperture, 250th of a second as my shutter speed, that's my flash sync speed for Olympus cameras, ISO 200, the native ISO for an Olympus camera. Let's see what I get with those settings in this lighting conditions. Okay, Charlotte, quick test picture. Here we go. And what I get is, well, not a completely black picture because we can see a little bit of the LED lights, but they're nowhere near as bright as they look in the real world. For this to really work, I need to take a bit more control of the room lights because we've got really bright video lights here and, well, pretty bright LEDs. So I'm gonna turn some of the room lights off like this. And now we can see a little bit clearer what's going on. So my first job really is to set the exposure for the LED lights. So I'm gonna change my settings. The first one is I'm just gonna open up my aperture all the way for this lens, which is f2.8. That's gonna let a lot more light into the lens and give me a brighter result. So let's have a look and see what we get just by changing that one thing. Okay, Charlotte, quick little test photo, here we go. Well, that's definitely made the bulbs a little bit brighter, but not really what I'm after. So I need to change one more thing. I could change the ISO, but that's gonna make my image a little bit more noisy and grainy. So I'm actually gonna change my shutter speed. So I'm at 250th of a second. I'm gonna lower my shutter speed down until I get to maybe a hundredth of a second. Let's try that. Quick little test photo. And that's getting a little bit better and I can go even brighter if I change my shutter speed to a 60th of a second. So why don't I go even slower with the shutter speed? It would make the bulbs even brighter, but it would increase the chance of model movement. Now, normally that would just mean blur, but have a look at this. This weird effect is caused by movement and the flickering of the LED bulbs. So that is my exposure set for the LED lights, the continuous lights. Now we can start to think about the flash in this situation as well. So I could use my flash meter and come and take a meter reading, which I'm gonna do now, Charlotte, here we go. But when I do that, I'm getting some really weird results. And that often happens with LED bulbs that have a distinct flicker to them. Now we've tried to minimize the flicker as much as I can in the video itself, but trust me, there is a real flicker with these lights. So what's going on here? Well, it's down to how the flash meter works. It will show me the reading from the last flash of light that it sees. And it's seeing all of the little flicker from the LED bulbs as individual tiny flashes of light, wiping out the previous readings, including the one from the actual flash that I want to read. If you're having the same problem, here's what you do. Switch them off, then take your meter reading. And if you remember, I need to make my flash read f2.8. And then switch them back on again. It's less accurate but it will at least get you a close flash meter reading, or you could just use trial and error. Let's see how this looks. Here we go, Charlotte. And that looks great. So now we have exposure set for flash on Charlotte, and we still have detail in the light bulbs. That looks brilliant. 
So that's it. I've balanced the flash power with the LED lights. The color is quite interesting. I've set my camera's white balance to 5600K, which is roughly the same white balance as the flash. We'll talk more about white balance in a little bit, but for now, I think we should take a few shots like this. So Charlotte, are you ready? Okay, here we go. The bulbs I'm using here are oversized and very low wattage, which means they barely get warm to the touch. And yes, I checked them all personally before we started the photo session. I'm sure you've noticed that there is an interesting effect with the colors going on. The color of the flash and the color of the bulbs don't match. And that's because flash has a white balance of about 5600K and allegedly these bulbs are supposed to be 2700K. Now I could make them match by putting gels on the flash, but I don't have any gels to make that happen. So I'm gonna get more creative. And rather than trying to make the flash the correct white balance, I'm gonna make the bulbs, the right white balance. So Charlotte, if you can hold the bulb close to your face, I'm gonna change my white balance from 5600K all the way down to 2700K. And although that looks about right, it's not quite what I'm after. So what I'm gonna do is actually compromise, just increase my white balance a little bit to 3000K, which makes the bulbs a little bit warmer and feels about right. So that just leaves me the flash. Now this time, rather than trying to meter the flash and get it absolutely accurate, this is actually gonna be a fill flash because Charlotte's gonna hold the LED bulb really close to her face and that's the light on her face. The flash is secondary to that. So I've dialed it down right the way down to one 128th power. Have a look at this rather interesting result though. Here we go, Charlotte. So I get just a little bit of light coming out of the flash. I've still got the light from the bulb, but this time the color of the flash is much more blue. And that's because the flash is 5600K, but we're photographing at 3000K, which means the color result is shifted towards the colder blue end of the scale. And because it's a little bit dark and shadowy behind Charlotte, I'm gonna add in one more flash, which is this one, the Flashpoint Evolve 200. It's on its lowest possible power, 256 power. And that is just gonna bounce a little bit of light around the base. And again, the color of that light, when well, it's gonna appear blue, just like the other flash. Let's do a test shot, see how we go. Okay, Charlotte. And that just adds a nice little separation just in the background. And that looks terrific. Okay, let's take a few shots like this. Charlotte, are you ready? Okay, here we go. Now you might have noticed I've changed the shutter speed and that's just because Charlotte is gonna hold the bulbs much closer to her face and the closer you are to a light source, the brighter it is. So this has been a little bit different to usual because if you've watched Adorama TV in the past, you've almost certainly heard us say, remove the ambient light when you're doing your first studio photo. This case is different because I'm trying to work with it. And although it's not every day that you want to do this, knowing how to mix two different light sources is a really useful skill to have. Now, if you've enjoyed this video or you've got any questions, leave me a comment down below. Click on the bell icon and you'll never miss a video right here on Adorama TV. And of course, you've got to remember to click on that subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching.